Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and today on the Hermitcraft server, you know, I was looking at these two different kind of sky palaces XP Craft had built, and I realized with the power of night vision, one of these things is not like the other. We've got sky palace number one over here with quartz and white concrete, gray concrete, some orange and cyan concrete, a lot of glass, and then this one back here on the other shoulder there, well, it's sitting on my shoulder now, like a little demon, and it says, Joe, do what you want to do. Make me beautiful. And you know what, shoulder demon tower sky palace thing? Okay, you know what, you deserve to be just as brilliant as this angel over here on this shoulder. So, what we're gonna do, I imagine, is we're gonna fly up there right now. That's a potion and not a rocket. There we go. We're gonna fly up there right now. Now, this is designed to shade the sun, so we chugged a night vision potion earlier. And as you can see, we've got this overall shade here that is entirely comprised of stone bricks. We can do better. We've got these columns that are also stone bricks, and we can do better. And we've got these uh, campfires down here that are just normal orange flames. Ah, once again, we can do better. This tower reaches toward the heavens, but it doesn't aspire. So I feel, uh-oh, night vision wore off. That's okay. You know, obviously, when it's dark, the materials don't seem to matter quite as much. But if we could maybe get something in here that has a little bit of, uh, a little bit of motion to it, maybe a little bit of crying obsidian, might work out well. Why don't we go grab that now? As we head that way, though, I should mention, I took some time, actually, I took three hours. I spent three hours reorganizing this whole area here, and as you can see from this 30-second time lapse, I got a lot done, but wow, it is a whole place. And anyway, at least I know now where the stuff I need to grab is, so we will do that and be on our way back over there. Time skip. Creepers are just falling out of the sky into this thing. Clearly, this is an effective spawning tower. Even with several other people on the server, the creepers are indeed just falling out of there. Now, in order to actually be able to work on it, especially at night, we're going to need to chug this night vision potion. I also wanted to kind of set up some scaffolding over here at a safe distance away. And we're going to need to put a torch on top of the scaffolding so we don't have creepers um, you know, raining down on us from our own kind of alternate superstructure here. There we go. Great. So, as you can see, this whole thing is almost singularly all the same material. But that doesn't mean we have to like it. I was thinking for the Cryon Obsidian... We might be able to kind of put that in as some sort of, like, accents along these side corners. We obviously don't have enough to do the entire thing in Crying Obsidian, but we do have enough to get started. Now, these bits here, as you can see, are all one slab thick. And why don't we go ahead and extend that up, whoops, a little bit further out. There we go. Look at how perfectly I placed this. Because I'm clearly a genius. You don't need to put the word mad before genius, YouTube commenters. You can just call me a genius. It's okay. After condensing hours of inventory management down to 30 seconds, I thought I should really make this episode fly. So why not go ahead and take a page from WandaVision's book and steal from Bewitched that classic look in which this once stone brick structure has flown, and let's make it my own. Tinkle, tinkle, tink. Great. You know, folks, I've been looking at this portal hut and thinking this is a little bit humble. It doesn't really do XP Crafted's old base. Now my base, really a, a good favor in terms of showcasing how amazing this whole place is. So I've got a mock-up here of a potential future map. Now, obviously, we don't want the map to just be a bunch of glowstone with maps on it, but 
it does at least show us where there are opportunities around here. Now, one big opportunity that I located was over here. It seems like XP Crafted started carving out a road and didn't follow through. Now, I noticed that different roads around the area all seem to be blackstone and smooth blackstone slabs mixed with different gutter materials. Over here, we have smooth stone gutters. If we proceed this way apace, you'll see that the gutters transition here to normal stone. But then if we go through that tunnel here, we've got andesite gutters. And here is where we were looking at on the map. There's just not a road here that there should be. I don't know if I want to necessarily build the entire structure here that XB might have envisioned. He mentioned to me off camera that he had a port in mind, and I don't know. Like, there's too many ports in my opinion. You got the USB, you got the DVI, the HDMI. It's just too much, man. Maybe we'll come back to that one day. But I do want to have that road go somewhere. And for that road to go somewhere, it needs to exist. Now... I was thinking, okay, I collected all of XP Crafted's inventory into one area, so we don't have to worry about anything ever again. I thought wrong. It turned out that XP Crafted actually had a secret inventory storage area down here, underneath his, like, nether hub area. Look at this. Look at how many chests these are. That's too much, man. Now, some of these, I think, had blackstone in them somewhere. And in theory, that should help me to finish those up. And even if not, you know what? I'll, I'll make do. I'll figure something out. Oh, here it is. Here's a ton of blackstone. I knew it. He also has a lot of gravel here and a ton of soul sand. A lot of soul speed boots. So many soul speed boots. But anyway, I have roughly what I need to carry on. So I might as well be a wayward son. Time skip. While we have deviated heavily from XB Crafted's plans for this area in general, I have gone ahead and actually followed his plans a little bit with laying out this street here. Now, he told me that this street here was actually supposed to lead not to a bridge, but to a port. And, you know... I don't want to necessarily do everything exactly the way XB planned to do it in the first place, but it did really get me thinking, what kind of port would look good on the map? Because, you know, there are certain types of ports that would look incredible on the map, and we got to get that overhead view. What I'm actually thinking with the map is we'll, we'll move it up into this anti-grav structure. I've been trying to figure out what to do with the bedroom wall. Perfect place for a map. We can th slap some gross glowstone on there. Slap the map up, it'll look great. But, first, we need to figure out exactly how much space we need for this port. Now, I'm assuming XB intended to start about here. So, I'm going to start this way and then just kind of generally work out in this direction. We might have to level some of this. We might have to extend the path a little bit to get access. But, I think it should be good. We'll go ahead and get on that now. Time skip! Here is our road on our map. Before we added the port, let's go see what it looks like with that port properly in place. You know, as the port authority here in this part of the server, I really thought a lot about what I wanted to put in, and I had it narrowed down to either PS2 or VGA. And I thought, you know, that VGA port is just going to look so good there, especially once this tree is gone. You know, I feel like XB Craft is going to see this and he's going to be like, finally, someone who understands my vision. Not not the tree, though. The tree has no comprehension of XB Crafted's brilliance. So, dang it, there we go. Now, I do need to probably add some more stone kind of around here as well to kind of give this whole backplate kind of a solid feeling. But yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty pretty darn good about this. Dang it, Acacia decay faster. Also, when I look at it, I think that the screw hole over here, maybe we could tap that down a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it's fine as it is. But part of me wants to just go ahead and, and remove those and see how that looks. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. Ooh, I'm also realizing that the 
plate down here should come out maybe a little bit further because it comes out to there on that side. And these were traditionally rectangular plates. I mean, you look at enough VGA ports, you can tell when something's wrong, you know? So it's just really important as the port authority that I insist on authenticity. So we're going to just map stab these leaves to death, you know, ending their photosynthetic lives. You know, I know synthetic life is really big in movies right now. They had that Will Smith I Robot and, uh, you know, uh, what are those other movies about robots? Not Daring Fireball. The one, I don't know, the guy who played Han Solo was in it and it was like cyberpunky. And they, they were like, a tortoise is in the desert on its back. I forget what it's called. Anyway, feel free to correct me in the YouTube comment section below. I think, I think though, that this is, this is a pretty solid VGA video graphics array port. So, the question is, what can we do next? Time skip. As the port authority, I take my authority very seriously. So I went ahead and I audited each of the pinholes on this unit here. And I found that this port actually had an extra hole right here, which we have since plugged. So I went to fix the map and it turns out that apparently signs ruin the look of our port. It gives it this high contrast thing that you wouldn't really get. So we're gonna say goodbye to each of these signs Goodbye, pin one, red video, pin two, green video, pin three, blue video, pin four, reserved, pin five, ground, you're grounded, pin ten, you're grounded too, pin nine, goodbye, plus five volts, DC power, blue return, green return, red return, you're all dead to me, goodbye, pin eleven, reserved, pin twelve, I squared, C data, H sync, V sync, and I squared, C clock, all gone in order to restore our map to its proper former glory. There we go. There you have it. Now, now that is a quality port. I think that that's, that's really going to shock and awe XP Crafted when he sees it in this next video. People are going to be like, clearly Joe should just build all the ports. Maybe he should go replace Coralysis port. I'm just kidding. We can't replace Coralysis port until we bulk up our resume. So maybe we should get on that now. Time skip. As you can see behind me, we have two PS2 ports, one mouse, one keyboard, and oh no, we also have some scaffolding. But you know what? This scaffolding is just the beginning of the amount of scaffolding we need. I've been thinking deeply about what would make all this make sense. Why would this exist here physically? What would cause someone to build these? And I came up with the idea, which I believe reconciles neatly with this road, that this should be corporate art in some sort of, like, computer company's business campus. You know, it would have a great view of the water here. It's got this high-flow road. You know, we could have this go down into a parking garage. I need to work out the exact layout in my next episode and actually start building this. But I figure... XP Crafted has set us up with all sorts of other examples of corporate kind of um, architecture here and here. We can use those as a starting point to some degree. But really, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go lay our heads down and dream. Maybe not right now because it's not like dark yet. But I did start working on this bedroom. Ow, I just smacked into that really hard. Um... If anyone has an ice pack, feel free to leave it for me in the YouTube comment section below. But anyway, you can see here, there's our port. We can build some sort of like walkway, garden, outdoor lunch space around that. We'll have the main building be up here. We'll have the road dip into some sort of garage that goes down there. And uh, I think on the whole, it should look pretty cool. Feel free to leave any suggestions you have for that sort of corporate campus slash water area type thing in the YouTube comment sections below, along with my ice pack. Anyway, we need to head out for the day. So you know what? I want to wrap up with a little haiku I wrote. And I want to do it just right here.
near the ports. This episode was mid-roll ad-free thanks to Patreon sponsor Sora Girl. So in lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now read a poem of my own devising. Your mouse and keyboard and monitor are not ships, yet connect to ports. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.